And I welcome you to Imst in Western Austria. These are the eight men who will contest this final here in Imst this evening. Thomas Johannes goes at one. Erman Primazic goes at the Slovenian sex. Sebastian Helenka of Germany goes at number three. Romain de Grange of France goes at number four. Domin Skofic of Slovenia, five. Adam Andre of the Czech Republic, number six. Gotthier Super, seven. And the local favourite, Jakub Schubert, go out last. Thomas Johannes, 20 years old, and in fact, there he is in all his glory. Absolutely, indeed. So let's see how Thomas can do here on this men's route. As I mentioned here, if there any, anybody, maybe our cameraman can, can point to us later on in between. We are literally standing tonight, we're not sitting down at all. We're, I've got one hand on a parasol right now to, uh, to, to keep us dry from the rain. And I picked the one the worst nights possibly to not actually bring my uh, waterproof jacket. So, but in case there are, there are. So, to Johannes, underway. As a professional climber, how do you approach specific routes? Are you when you have your six minutes of observation time, what do you look for, more importantly? Um, it's Everyone has their own strategy. I personally like to read the route first and by myself and just try to like look at the holds and look for any moves that I think are going to be like more powerful or more dynamic because that's my weakness and that's where I need to know like where to pick up the pace and not hesitate. I think for other climbers, maybe if they are good at those moves, they might look for moves that are more technical and they, where they need to slow down. As you mentioned before, Delaney, any chatting to the route setters as well, they said to you, this is a route that you need power and you can't hang around on it too long either. You've got to really get, get on with business. And that's what Thomas is doing right now. Yeah, he's moving quite fast. Fast start, a fast start for the uh, for the young Frenchman. He's already what about 28 moves into this climb. Beg your pardon, 21, 22, 23 moves in. This route, 62 moves needed to uh, find the top in this final. Thomas, he's meant a 20 year old from Neron. Well supported from the crowd here. The French team were seemed in confident mood. They were all got getting ice cream this afternoon in Imst when it was actually sunny here earlier today, funny enough. And now getting around these couple of volumes. And now this is where it starts getting a little bit difficult for the climbers, isn't it, Danielle? Yes, it is. Right at the angle change. It's where you switch from the technical, smaller movements to maybe some more dynamic movements with more commitment needed. <laughs> Thomas off to a, a good start here. Just to remind you, eight minutes is what each climber gets in these final, and with in some rather shocking conditions that we have here right now. Worth thunderstorms forecast for the area, but hopefully they're going to stay away. These guys won't mind climbing in this, these conditions, climbing in the rain. They don't have a problem with, but that is the first casualty of this final route. As I say, this is the next man, Urban Primozic, 23-year-old. Made the final in Chamonix 12 months ago when he came in eighth place. Didn't go out to Asia. A 35 plus, a 26 plus in qualifying, and a 50 in his semi-final. Is what Urban got to get here in this final. He came out at the same time as I did yesterday during the semis, and he's, I, I don't think I've ever met him before, but he was very nice. He <laughs> wished me good luck as we were going out together. It's something I love about the sport is you don't know half the people and they're still like, you know, there for you to cheer for you. That's one thing that I'm um, very happy about as well. It's uh, that everybody is very friendly on the climbing circuit whether you're a first timer here or you don't know much about the sport all these athletes are very happy to give you their time and their thoughts and their knowledge as well they're very happy to share with you also tonight if you are on twitter the twitter rati out there i know there's plenty of you the hashtag is ifscwc so please do send us your thoughts on twitter i know many of you will who do you want to win tonight, here in the pouring rain, here in the Alps, here in Imst? Fascinating final that we have here. 
I know Commander, who's holding our umbrella for us here very kindly, is on her phone right now, about to tweet away. She might actually take a selfie of us here with, her, with herself holding the umbrella. I think she's doing that right now, in fact. This is unbelievable. Rimizic, in the meantime, 90 seconds into his climb, and he's about 22 moves into it. A 62-move climb needed here to find the top. And I think the higher you go here, Delaney, I think the, the wetter the conditions will be. Yep, I agree. 1 minute 45. Those holes just do not look so good. You've climbed in conditions like this before. Just tell, explain to everybody at home the difficulty. Why is it so hard? Um, you just lose all the friction. And so, it just for me, like I want to chalk up on every move, which is something that would be really awful on a route like this where you just cannot stop. So Primsic around the 27, 28 move mark now. Starting to go left. He'll use his left hand on that black hold on the orange volume. And now begins to his climb. Thomas Johannes, 34.5 plus was the score given to the young Frenchman. I see he watches from a little champion's chair that has been granted to him on the floor. But already Primsic, I think, is around that mark as well. Yep. He's that move much more dynamically. He's looking pretty solid. Plenty of enthusiastic support for the Slovenian climate. He's now on the 35-36 mark. It's a long way to go, but if you're looking for a strong climb here, will the Slovenian go in and out early? If this rain is to come, and I think it's going to get heavier as the night progresses. Strong climb here from the 23-year-old, uh, and you never know, it could be good enough to take victory here. It happened to Jakob Schubert in Mokpo last year. He went out number one and number two, found a top, nobody got anywhere near it in the rest of that final. That's what he has left to get to. He's on the 35-36 move mark right now. He's shaking out on like little pancake <laughs> uh, jibs. Just doesn't look so good. Plenty of chalk on those hands. He looks like a snooker referee's gloves. They're that white. Halfway through his allotted time. Now begins his campaign into this roof section. Delaney mentioned they may have to turn around here a couple of times. Yep. Right here. And that's the first part of this obstacle, and Primozic making good progress here. He's around around the 43-44 move mark now. And I think we'll have to turn around again. Oh, oh, oh! Can he hold on? He does. Uh, good recovery. How long will it last? So he's beginning to slip. He seems okay. Yeah. He seems to get control back. He was going there for a minute, Delaney, and he's recovered well. Yeah. Three minutes left. Still plenty of time. And it was a bridge too far it for the Slovenian. So much out of him. Sebastian Hellinger, 20 years of age, 20 year old, the world number 10, a former world youth champion of 2012, third in the European Championships in 2015. It's a, been a massive confidence boost for Seb. Ben, in the last 12 months, he has, uh, I wouldn't say struggled through injury physically, it's been struggling through illness, not injury. Out in Asia at the end of last year, he was incredibly ill. He had a fever at one point in Mopo. We measured, I think it was 104 degrees Fahrenheit, I think he had. And the, I think he very quickly ended up going home from uh, Mopo and Rujiang and, and Inzai as well. Uh, he, he was sick last weekend as well. Yes, indeed. And Brionson, he told me yesterday that he, was, he wasn't too well in Brionson two weeks ago either. So he says to me he's back to 100% fitness and he's ready to tackle this final here in Imps and pick up that first World Cup crown. And I said you met him before as well. He's one of the nicest climbers on the surface. He has a very good attitude. He's endlessly positive about everything. It's really incredible. 60 seconds down. 
Und eben das Ding heute ist wieder was da. So Halenke, again he's not wasting much time either, he's already up to move 20, already a third it into the climb. Seems to be pretty consistent Ooh. for all the guys. I thought Ruth said said to you, didn't they? He said something about that roof section, that's when the this final may be won or lost. It's getting colder. That may it actually help with the friction. Or it may make things worse, because I know that yesterday, as it got colder, um, I numbed out faster on the wall. Just explain what, what, what you meant by that. It, it might get better for some climbers, or worse? Depending. Um, if it's... It could improve the friction, but if it gets too cold, then uh, the climber's hands will numb out, and then they won't be able to feel what they're grabbing. Interesting you mentioned that, actually, because the time just looked, it's quarter to eight here in our local time. Even though it's still daylight here, the sun goes behind the Alps here around about 20 past seven. And one thing you noticed here yesterday is that it gets colder around about seven o'clock. It drops about seven, eight, up to 10 degrees Celsius. So you're actually spot on there with what you said. It does get colder here. As the night progresses, so I'll make interesting reading for the women's final, especially if this rain continues. So it looks like it's going to be here for quite a while. But Helenka not wasting much time here whatsoever. He's halfway up the route. Three minutes into his allotted eight, he's already made it to move 35. It's looking really strong. Well no so far. time to uh, rest. And the crowd are right behind him as well for the 20 year old German. And now, off and running, he is 42, 43 moves in. He went out early in Chamonix. For those of you who remember, who watched that European Championship about four weeks ago. Dominic Skofic commentated with me that night and he said he should have won. He, he looked comfortable, he looked... wasn't fatigued whatsoever, he wasn't pumped at all. And he, all he did was slip. And he felt he could have chopped out that day and if he would have done, he would have won the competition. He's a very good style. He moves like very efficiently and total confidence. 45 moves in. Another 17 moves to find the top, and he's what two thirds of the way there right now. He's got great footwork, recovering off of the toe hook. <laughs> he's finding a good rest period there, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Good flexibility from the 20 year old from Germany, the world number 10. 36 plus, a top, and a 50 plus with his three scores en route to this final. Said taking it as well here. He's around 47, 48 moves in now. Are you? We're on the same area as Primozic, but his score has yet to be inputted into the computer. S still waiting for that one to, to land to us. It hasn't arrived yet, so it might be a little bit of trouble that we're having with the scoring system here because of this weather. A lot of support here vocally, we've got a lot of the coaches sitting in front of us here in our commentary position. Three minutes to go for Helenka. He's run about move 45. Very circumspective climb this from the German. He's, he shot up rather quickly and now he's using his rest, he's, he's literally perpendicular to the floor right now, he is that horizontal, and now he's on the move. Not to be. Indeed it is, 48 plus for Sebastian Hellenke, he now leads this final, Romain de Grange, 32 years of age, made every final since the start of the 2014 Lead World Cup season in Haiyang, that was in 
June 2014. I think it's so impressive that he can do this at 32. <laughs> um, and there's not many sports out there that you can be competitively viable, at, you know, past your 20s. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think. What would you say the age would be for the peak for a professional climber? Do you feel? Uh, what age would you say? Mid 20s, about 22 it's to 27. It's hard because I think when you're super young, you have the advantage of not having gone through puberty, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you got no battle scars either. Yeah, but climbing is one of those sports where you really do need the experience. Um, it's interesting that you just asked me that because I wrote like a 15-page paper uh, <laughs> last semester trying to figure it out. And um, I think climbing is just one of those truly unique sports where you can be successful at any age because it takes so many factors to be successful. We shall see, indeed. Minute down for Romain de Grange, and again he's with the climber. What he's about a quarter of the way into the routes right now. He does wear his heart on his sleeve, does the Frenchman. He doesn't move as quickly as the other male climbers. Would that be a disadvantage, do you feel, on this route? Um, I don't think. No, I don't think so because he's not stopping, he's still moving. He's just being a little bit more precise. That could be an advantage because he could. Uh, sequence things a little bit better. Well, uh, well, I hope Romain's not a superstitious fellow. Look at the number on his back. <laughs> Maybe it could be his lucky number tonight, who knows? Two minutes down of his allotted eight, and has already reached the 26 27 move mark. What I'm seeing here, Delaney, he, he seems consistent right now, and mm -hmm. you know, and comfortable in, the, in this climb. He's, he's, he's not being hesitant at all. It's just he's seeing the move, and he's being comfortable. He's not trying to make any dangerous moves so far. He's knows it's, it's tough out there with these conditions, and he's looking comfortable right now. I think on a route like this, that's exactly what you want. Just keep on flowing with it, and, but not moving necessarily too fast because. Just looks, <laughs> I don't know, lots of sequencing. Thirty-six, thirty-seven moves in. Forty-eight plus is the lead right now. The man with the red mohawk. Sebastian Hellinger is the man who leads. Now then, this is where the stakes begin to get raised. Thirty-eight moves down. Grange takes his first rest. Plenty of support for the Frenchman, many from his team. And now, we've got to find the methodology here. Make sure he gets this one right. Basti rested a long time here, throwing the toe up. He chose not to do that. Make sure he clips in, and then a little bit more of a rest as well. Round 45 minutes, this is where Primozic got to. And now, De Grange. Where can he go from here as he's, he's halfway through his allotted eight? You can see in the, the screen there the, the mountains in the background of how heavy this rain is. It's still pouring down. Now De Grange on the move. He's around about the mark where Helenka got to. Yep. Oh, oh, the foot nearly went. He's recovered. Can he keep control though? Oh my god. This is not easy. Not easy whatsoever. He's done well to recover to there. How far more can he go? He is literally horizontal on this wall right now. There's the top you can see next to that number one. And who knows if he does find it, he could be number one here tonight. Super smart for trying to recover right before the angle change again. I think 
think throwing to that black volume is going to be real well, tough. Well, put, he's on our 54 moves in now. Yes. And all of a sudden, the Grange here with the weather. Due to get worse, this may be... Just may be, Could be one of the climbs of his life. He's looking real good. 55, round 56 in. He's about six moves away here from finding the top. Two minutes. Oh, miss. Time is not his factor here, only himself. He's still going strong, here's the Frenchman. Thirty-two. Oh, it's a good climb. It's an excellent climb from Romain de Grange. There's confirmation. Romain de Grange, 57 plus in first place. Sebastian Helenka, 48 plus in second. Here's Dominic Skullfish, the 21 year old. And one thing I, I have noticed is I just look over to my left and the amount of umbrellas I see out in the audience. Everybody is wrapped up warm. It's getting colder and colder and colder here as well. And the rain is getting heavier and heavier and heavier. We'll make the women's final rather interesting in what 30 minutes or so. Yeah, I think numbing out on the wall is going to be a huge issue for the women. We'll chat about the women's final later, but it's it's a couple of questions I'll, I'll ask you about that, and especially the the weather being a massive factor. You mentioned numbing out on the wall could be a major issue. Mm -hmm. We'll chat about that shortly. But with the men we have left, do you expect that maybe not to happen here? Especially with the climbers quality we have left in Dom and Gautier, Adam and Jakob? Um, I mean, hopefully it won't be an issue for them. It looked like maybe the reason why Sebastian froze was maybe his hands were cold. So, I don't know, it could be an issue for the rest of the men as well. Well, we shall see, indeed. It's hard to tell. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, there's a few factors that the climbers don't have to make do with here tonight, not just as the these route, the difficult exam that the route setters have set for these uh, eight men, but also conditions as well. If we had this final at five o'clock, we would have been absolutely fine. The sun was still sh shining, and then from 6.30 onwards here, on the last hour and a half, it has just been bucketing it down, as we say, in my part of the world. 90 seconds down, Skofic, as I said, the 20-year-old. The world number four, fifth in the overall last year. Excellent record as well. Since the last 18 months, he's only missed three finals. Two of them, of course, were in France. This month, or should I say last month now, as we are on the first day of August. Ninth in Germany, ninth in Briançon. Went out in the bubble. Bumps. Got a couple of podiums as well. Third out in Japan in Enzai. Second in Mokpo in the, in the rain there. Third in Chamonix. We didn't, didn't mention this in Mokpo. He did come second then. And my memory serves me right. He went out in the middle of the pack. Fourth. The middle is the best place to go out. In you reckon the middle, so one of these guys here, maybe Domin, Adam, will be too late for him, do you think? Or four or five here. So Roman has come up number four. Domin here, number five. You reckon they're going to get the best of these conditions? Yeah, probably. And I like, I don't, as personally, I like the middle because uh, you're not the first person to go out, but also you don't necessarily have to listen to uh, how the other uh, climbers are going. On the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you it, don't. It, it, that's something that always puts you guys off. And I remember Mina Marcus telling me about this that when you hear roars, yeah. you think, okay, I have to, I'm going to have to climb now. Yep. <laughs> you know, I can't you know just. No, you have to top. <laughs> yeah. As I mentioned Skullfish, third in Chamonix, 2014, second in Mokpo last year. That's his best in performance, in fact, was in Mokpo last year. Getting on the podium a couple of times. He's only 21, of course. Plenty more climbing years ahead of him. And no doubt he'll be a climber who will have a number of World Cups to his name over the next months and years to come. Skullfish has already made it. Yeah. Already made it to room, move number 34. 55 plus, I believe, is Ramon's 57 plus, I do beg your pardon, is the score he has to beat. He's still got plenty of work to do. He's only halfway through his allotted time. Delaney, you said he looked a little bit hesitant at one point there. Yeah, a little bit. But he's recovered. <laughs> I'm telling you, something in Slovenian food. <laughs> it's been really good. Well, their coach Roman's around what? He's about 10 feet to my right at the moment, taking pictures. Very popular guy as well on the uh, on the climbing tour. He's very friendly. 
and, uh, and even he says he's amazed at the talent he has in Slovenian climbing right now. It seems to be a conveyor belt of talent coming from that small part of Europe. Now then, Skolfitch, how do you tackle this difficult section of the route? He's around about move 40, 41 right now. So he's getting to run the area where his fellow teammate Primozic got to. And now has to do the turn. The climbers might be okay on this part of the wall. That is a little bit of cover there. It's when they go out a little bit more. That's when the rain is really hitting that end of the wall. Remember about that third volume you can see in the top right of your screen. That's the area that is really difficult, especially with the weather hitting that area of the wall. Scofitz turns back again. 45 moves in. Bottom in third position right now. He's ahead of his fellow teammates and compatriots. He looks really comfortable too. Still with plenty of time in hand to tackle the final section. Two and a half minutes left to play. 46, 47, 48 moves coming up. This is the rest period that the Grange found. Uses it up. Quite a bit of time here, recovered well to take a final onslaught towards the top Swinging of the section. Tape Delaney, off his go. finger. <laughs> Just took tape off his finger? Yeah. Slovenian team shouting encouragement. Ramon shouting to his pupil. Look at how calm his face looks. Calm section. And 145 left. Still annals of time. Oh, a little bit of a slip, but he's recovered okay. Move 50 secured. Seven away from the lead. Oh no! Skolfitz will take round second place. The best in the business. Adam Andre, seventh in Brion on second in the European Championships in Chamonix. So then Andre, Adam Andre, 007, license to thrill, here we go. And this could be interesting. He said to me before the broadcast of any, this is a, a route that could suit Adam. Yeah, I think so. Is it a case of stamina and strength, power endurance routes, as it were? It's just, like I said, a route that I don't think you'd want to really stop anywhere. And Adam moves pretty consistently when he climbs. Brings a lot to the party. I've got to know him quite well over the last 12 months. Fascinating to uh, know that like he's, he's, he's a multilingual fellow. He actually helped me out in Chamonix a couple of weeks ago when uh, uh, Ramon Julian Pibonke doesn't speak much English. Adam, though, says, hey, don't worry, I speak fluent Spanish. So he actually helped me d interpret the interview when the Spanish coach Tony wasn't available. So, and that bet in mind, he actually won the silver medal that day. So just to go to show how much he just looks after the sport, looks after himself, he looks after everybody else as well. He's a very likeable fellow. He really is. Uh, I got to listen to him teach a clinic at the camp back in February. And it was really quite interesting. I'll tell you what sports he reminds me of. He reminds me of uh, tennis's Roger Federer, of his mannerisms and the way he is. And Federer is, all, is loved around the world and still is. And it's he reminds me very much like Roger Federer of, of the way he presents himself and his mannerisms too. You know, he's, he's very friendly, he's very open. He's always happy to give advice to young climbers and as well as fellow competitors as well. He's, and just to remind everybody, he's only 22 years of age as well. Economics scholar as well. Reads economics and reads roots, likes reading a book. And there's already up to the 29 
Move Mark. Ziemlich sicher der beste Festkletterer unserer Zeit. Der einzige, der 2,9 B plus geklettert ist. Andre, a bit of a quiet start to the season in his eyes, you could say. He did win the silver medal out in Chamonix, seventh place in Briançon. Did take part in the bouldering as well a few months ago, winning silver at the European Championships out in Innsbruck. And was also suffering a little bit of uh, illness coming back from China after the bouldering competitions there. A 40 in qualifiers, he topped out in his second qualifying route and a 51 plus puts it into third place in the general result right now and he's already up to route move 36 37 nine time a world cup winner and as i mentioned a double world champion already winning two world titles in the same year a feat you feel may never be matched again in this sport Andre all of a sudden is a little bit of rest on, on that volume and now looks to tackle this roof section. Delaney, how's he looking to you? He's looking really well, um, or really good. I think one of the hardest parts about on sighting is knowing when to speed up and slow down and he just does it so well. He climbed the beginning like moderately and then he just sped up um, at that section whenever it got cruxy before the black volume and then he sl slowed down again whenever he needed to. It's, it's perfect. He is good. He is very good indeed. He's got annals of time. Four minutes left. Andre already to on the 45 move mark. Now, now that we'll see how tough these conditions really are at the top of this top of this route. Uh, the rain has been hammering it in the last hour or so. Andre is making excellent progress here. A little bit of a grimace though from Andre and he gone. So then, Adam Andre will not be winning here against Gautier Stupert of France, a 24 year old winner in Briançon. And those holes at the top of the wall are not as wet as they would have been around 40 or so minutes ago. I think the biggest challenge now is just how warm you can stay. It's just getting colder and colder as the night goes yes. on. Andre was in 48 and a half plus. They're giving him a year now and lies in third place. It's the bear in the meantime. He was super in Briançon, part of the pun. Winner there. Fifth in Chamonix earlier this year. Eight was his unlucky number at the end of last year. He was eighth from Gijon all the way to Kron. Including the three World Cups he had in Asia. He made the finals, but coming eighth place on five occasions in a row there. Only climber to top out on both qualifying routes on Friday morning. 51 plus he secured in the semi-final on Friday night. Puts him out here as the seventh climber of eight in this final. Super is not wasting much time here. He's already 20 moves in. He's taken him a minute 20 to get there. Out in Asia last year, he was coming off the wall in early in uh, in final routes. Seems to him coming up, remembering coming off the wall in Mockport, about 10, 12 moves it was. But those days are long gone now, long behind him. He's learned from their mistakes, as it were. Securing that gold medal in Briançon on home soil two weeks ago. A very popular victory it was too. I'm sure it gave him quite a bit of confidence. Well, that's exactly the question I was going to ask you. Where, you know, from good climbs or podiums that you've had in the past, how much confidence does it give you to the next climb that you go to, the next competition? It's so helpful. <laughs> So already to the halfway mark. 31 moves done. And De Grange sits in that chair motionless right now. He's, 
he's looking up like he's watching the telly, in all fairness. Sitting there like he's watching the TV on a, on a Sunday night. It's a hard position to be in. <laughs> it's supposed to be awful. Awful. It's like you don't, you want them to do your best, or their best, and you don't really want to wish that they would fall, <laughs> but you also kind of want to win. <laughs> Indeed. You're keeping your fingers crossed for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Five minutes to go. So then. But does Gauthier go from here? Well, 37 moves in right now. Andre had a little bit of a rest here as well. Fast, turning up. Okay. <laughs> He's having a good nose. Mm. Having a good peek of what's to come. <laughs> the small black hole is his next move. <laughs> the lactic acid put, uh, pumping in those arms right now. Mm -hmm. Trying to get rid of a little bit of a rest there, so see how he tackles this roof section halfway through this climb. Move 40 done, 41. Now that's the turn. Back to Cliff as well. So we're on to begin to, to come on stock, as did Fingersic as well. And Helenke. Got the Super riding this crest of a wave at the moment, and a wave of confidence it is as, as well. Bringing that form from Briançon here to Emst. How's he looking to you, Delaney? He's looking good, but also maybe a bit pumped. <laughs> Does he have enough left in the tank as it were to tackle this last section? Let's see. On the 45 mark. Another <laughs> big rest coming here from the Frenchman. The 24 year old, the world number three. He's chopped out twice here in Emst. Will he scupper? Oh, no. The Grands has made him World Cup victory. Will he? Will he? Whoa! It won't be Super's day. He wasn't super enough here in Imst. Jakob Schubert. Sixth in Chamonix. Got on the podium out in Briançon. Schubert starts his ascent to victory and possibly another World Cup crown and one on home soil, more importantly. Jakob, 23 years of age, the world number two. Winner of the overall last year in 2014, has won 14 World Cups. Amazingly, 14 lead World Cups, won the world title in 2012. The last World Cup he won was in Mokpo last year, roughly Delaney in weather like this. Maybe that'll give him a bit of confidence for the night, in addition to him being in his hometown. Indeed, he only lives, what, half an hour away from here by car in Innsbruck. A 40 plus, a 39 plus, and a 52 plus with his three scores in qualifying and the semi final, respectively. 14 World Cups to his name. Third place in Briançon last year, third place here in Emst as well. Was second here the two years prior to that. The winner out in Mokpo last season, as well as Haiyang as well, did well out in Asia last year. He's already 19, 20 years in. 
doesn't seem like he's moving quite as quickly as the other guys. Is this a more conservative approach, you feel? Yeah. Conservative approach indeed from Jakub Schubert, will it pay off? 57 plus, and it's a tough score to beat. It's the Grand is the only one who's got that high. Past that roof section, up towards the last quarter of the wall of the route, and he was what five moves away from chopping out. So, not only the other six have got close, I think the Grand's chances are better than 50 50 right now if we're going to go on the past climbers that we've seen so far. But this man has talent in abundance. Again, you chat about nice guys in the circuit. This one is definitely up there with one of the best. I can't take them when they World Cup victory in Jakob's career. Not just in league climbing, but also in bouldering. And this crowd, this partisan crowd here in Austria, are right behind their fellow countrymen. Three minutes in. He's on move 31 right now. He needs another 26 to secure victory. Looks like he may already be getting pooped. The glance looks on from that chair. Four and a half minutes left to go. Everybody is on the edge of their seats here. Fans, coaches. So Delaney has been standing room only for us. We've been perched in the corner here. Yeah. Commander very kindly is holding an umbrella for the pair of us as the rain buckets down still here. In Emst. Halfway through is a lot of time. The crowd begin to applaud their own 36 37 moves you could be right here Delaney he seems to be getting a little bit prompt here doesn't he yeah he does lactic acid beginning to build and he did have much his own way in Moppa we went out first that day and the rain came down and nobody got anywhere near topping out on that occasion and he went out number one or number two in that final found the top and nobody else got nowhere near Schubert, maybe. Could be the one here to scuffle de Grange's party here at Nemst. Is Schubert going to conduct his way to another victory here at Nemst? This is the section. But this will be one or lost. De Grange still looks on from that chair below. doesn't know Jakob where he needs to get to. He's around about 43, 44 moves in at the moment. Now resting. Needs another 14. A tie is good enough for him. He wins on the comeback roll for having a better semi-final score than De Grange. All he needs to do is tie. Two and a half minutes left to go. How's he looking, Delaney, to you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Here Seems we... like he's getting a bit pumped, but I, I, I think he might have enough energy for that one powerful move. Throw yeah, the this is really, be coming up right now. This could be, this could be the move that may secure him victory here. He is getting the lactic acid building up there on those arms. Still going strong though, is Schubert. Still going, but maybe, maybe he's losing it here. Is he losing it? He's still going strong. Still got it. Still got it. De Grange may have to wait for another time here to get his World Cup victory. 51 moves, I have that now. Can he clip in? He can do. He's never won it in Ems before, Jakob. Tell you what, they'll be dancing in Innsbruck if he does, though. He's actually recovering in these little crimps, too. 53. I have that. He's still going. Still going. The crowd are right behind him. Jakob Schubert. Searching for victory. Hit in Ems. 
He may get there. He may certainly do. It could be another World Cup crown for the 23-year-old from Ensbrook. I think the crowd are signaling to him. He may have just got there. And the Grimes will have to wait another day. That might be enough for Jakob, though. Green, Ramon de Grange, 57 plus. Jakob Schubert, 57. Dominic Schofield will receive the bronze medal.